everyone, and welcome to Chats with Shani. This week, we're starting a brand new season of South Africans Abroad. But before we get into today's guest, if you have not yet, please like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you always get notified when a new video is released. Oh, and press the notifications bell, please. Um, this week, we get to speak to Xavier Zitzman all the way from Luxembourg. Now, I know in season one, we did do a an episode on Luxembourg, but today we're going to get into the finer details about moving there and some of the administrative things that goes along with the relocating to the country. Xavier, welcome to Chats with Shani. It's amazing to have you here. Please tell the viewers a bit about yourself, which city you're living in, and how long you've been in Luxembourg for. Hi, Shani. Uh, thanks for that lovely introduction. Um, to all the viewers, uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, so, as Shani said, I'm Xavier Zitzman. I moved to Luxembourg in uh, 2020, and I've been living here ever since. Uh, so that makes my that makes this year my third year in Luxembourg, uh, working and living over here. Awesome. So, Xavier, tell us, you know, how did it get to you actually moving to Luxembourg, choosing Luxembourg, and what was that visa process? Was it a visa or like a work permit? Well, so the whole process started was uh, when I resigned uh, two and a half years into my articles. Uh, I was, my full intention was to become a CASA. And um, I got to a point where I was working in a toxic environment and uh, I realized that it wasn't for me. And uh, coincidentally, one of my previous colleagues, I saw that she was traveling around Europe quite often and enjoying it uh, on Facebook. And then I just clicked on a a Facebook profile. I saw the company she was working for, did some research, and then um, you know I quite liked the company, and uh, they had offices all over the world. Um, so I applied in five different cities, one of them being Luxembourg, and uh, I got a call back for Luxembourg, and that is how I I got the job. Um, to take you through the administrative <clears throat> requirements, so firstly you need a, a Type B visa. So that is a long stay visa, which is uh, in excess of, or no, I think it's either 90 days or in excess of 90 days. Um, and then you also need to get a uh, ADM certificate. So that is a certificate that the employer actually applies for uh, within Luxembourg. So it's basically the Luxembourg's uh, employment agency. And they basically need to tell the employment agency that the skills aren't available in Luxembourg, so we need to reach outside of Luxembourg to employ someone. So um, once you have those certificates, once you have a visas, um, then you can then apply for a temporary authorization to stay, uh, which you then apply to the Luxembourg government from South Africa. And then once you have your temporary authorization to stay, your Type D visa, uh, and then of course your plane tickets, uh, then you come over to Luxembourg. Uh, once you arrive in Luxembourg, you need to register at the Office of Immigration. And then you start applying for your, your residence uh, certificate. So that so, sounds like a lot of things that you had to go through before you could actually get onto the plane. So tell us how long did that process take, you know, from you receiving the offer and accepting the offer to work in Luxembourg to actually getting onto the plane, you know, getting all that paperwork done. How long did that roughly take you? So from the time that I accepted the offer to the time that I left South Africa was six months. Um, as we know in South Africa, sometimes public administration takes quite a while. Yeah. So uh, to be honest, my the longest <clears throat> piece of documentation that I had to wait for was my police clearance. Um, but since from the time that I flew out of South Africa and the time that I landed in Luxembourg to having my residence permit took about, I think, two months. So uh, in Luxembourg, it's a bit more speedy um, over here. The public administration is quite good and quite fast. So um, it was just a matter of getting some documentations together uh, with regards to my employment, uh, also uh, with regards to some of like my personal identification documents, uh, you know, your visas and my passport, you know, all of those type of things. And then um, once you submit that to the immigration office, they 
you know, take it to, to their back office, have a look at it, make sure that everything is in order. Um, you also have to do a medical test uh, where you are subjected to uh, quite a few tests in terms of uh, tuberculosis, um, some a drug test as well. And um, once everything is confirmed, then you get called in to get your biometrics taken. And once that is done, you then get your residence card, which uh, lasts for a year. And then after that year, you reapply and then it's valid for another three years. And then I think you need to then need to uh, apply on an annual basis. But then also you can start uh, the citizenship uh, process, which then takes place after five years of um, living and working in Luxembourg. So that's actually quite a bit that you have to do before you get like your residence card. So with regards to the medical examination, because I know I've been through one myself, was there mm -hmm. like probing and sticking of needles for blood work and all those things? Did you have to get any additional vaccinations or anything like that? Uh, so I didn't have to get any vaccinations. Um, we are talking now, you know, prior to COVID. So at the time, um, I didn't have to get any vaccinations. Uh, they, they, on there is a questionnaire that they ask you, and there are some vaccinations listed on there. Um, they, I don't recall them drawing blood, uh, but I do recall them uh, doing like a, a, what do you call a subdermal test. So it's basically to see if you've been exposed to tuberculosis. Um, and uh, they also do kind of like an X-ray of your chest to see if you also um, aren't uh, potentially carrying TB around with you. So it wasn't, uh, from what I recall, it wasn't extremely invasive. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> and, and and the costs associated, you know, for getting your residence costs for doing the medical, is that something that you had to pay up front and then your company reimbursed you for? And also, can you recall maybe just some of the costs, like a, a round figure, rough estimate as to how much that was that you had to pay up front? So I think there's, there is some cost involved. It's a, it's a minor cost, though. I think it was anywhere between 80 and 100 euros, if I'm not mistaken, that I had to uh, pay as a kind of administration fee. Um, other than that, everything else was uh, kind of a cost pre process. Um, because it, of course, you've already taken care of your um, temporary authorization to stay. And of course, the Luxembourg authorities know that you are here to work um, and that potentially you, you don't necessarily have money up front to pay for all of these processes. So as far as, I'm con as, far as I can remember, I think it was 80 to 100 euros. I, I can't remember paying, spending any more than that. That must have been so nice. My medical in the United States was $500. So wow. When I hear something like 82, like 100 euros, I'm like, wow. I'm yeah, I, I, didn't have to, I didn't have to pay anything um, with regards to that. Um, also, when you, when you do become a, a resident, you uh, get uh, admission to the CNS, which is the National Health Insurance. And <clears throat> a lot of the things um, that you would pay for under kind of normal circumstances or anywhere else, you are covered for in your, your health insurance, so which is part of the national health insurance. So for example, uh, when I go to a GP, I pay upfront and then I submit my receipt to the CNS and then they reimburse me 88% of the cost um, of my medical bills. Um, and it, it's quite extensive. Uh, there are certain things, obviously, like cosmetic surgery and those type of things they don't um, cover. But I'd say most of your um, medical costs are covered in terms of your national health insurance, which you do contribute to out of your salary. But that actually kicks off uh, immediately once you, you know, become a resident uh, or you receive a resident card or I should say you, you get resident status within the country. Well, it seems like there are quite some good benefits of living and relocating mm -hmm. to Luxembourg. Um, so Xavier, you're in the process where you done all your documentation that has brought you to Luxembourg. You've done your work permit. Um, you've done your medical examination. It's taken two months, but obviously during those two months, you need a place to stay. So tell us what is like the housing market like in Luxembourg? 
Are you in a situation where you have to share housing? And how much would it be roughly for a one bedroom apartment in Luxembourg? So uh, I'll, ask you, I'll answer your last question first. Um, so I, I moved into a place of my own um, at the beginning of, no, towards the end of 2021. And uh, it depends on where you want to live uh, and how close to the city you are. So generally housing closer to the city and within the city gets quite expensive. Um, so I started off in Luxembourg doing a house share. Uh, initially, I actually uh, got my accommodation through Airbnb. And then um, I got lucky to bump into the landlord and ask her if uh, she does long-term contracts. And uh, that was in a shared living space. Uh, I was spending about 850 euros uh, per month on accommodation in shared um, living. And then, uh, you know, if you want to move out by yourself and live by yourself, a studio apartment in a, in a nice area close to the city will cost you anywhere between 1,700 to 2,000 euros. So housing, housing is quite expensive. Um, and I would, my advice to anyone who would like to move to Luxembourg is to definitely look into that. And, um, to understand how you'd like to live. If you don't, if you're someone who doesn't mind sharing with people, doesn't mind having people in your space, um, and also having inconsistencies with that. Uh, like I said, I was living in a, a house that was an Airbnb as well. So I was constantly meeting new people. Um, there was hardly any consistency. Some people are okay with that. Um, some people are okay with it for a time. Um, other people, not so much. So I would say that Prior to coming to Luxembourg, if you do intend on moving here, do good research on the housing market because it, it is quite expensive. And also understand the conditions of where you're going to be living. So, and the requirements of your rental contract. So you have some landlords who have agency fees, some who don't. You have uh, some people who need three months deposit, other people two months, some one month. Some people include charges in the, the um, rental price, others don't. So um, I'd say, you know, read uh, the conditions quite carefully so that you don't get, get caught out. Yeah, and do extensive research so that you know exactly how much money to save beforehand, before coming exactly. to Luxembourg. I mean, Luxembourg uses the euro, so therefore that's about, what, 17 times the South African rand, between 17 and 18 times the South African rand. And if you're going to have to pay three months worth of 800 euros make sure that you have a sufficient amount stored up before moving or relocating to Europe or and and to Luxembourg so you have your apartment your house sharing and you're living your best life tell us about the transportation services within Luxembourg um, is public service I mean public service is public transportation good is it trustworthy or do you need a car while you're living there so it's actually quite funny because I was, I remember I was at the bus stop not too long ago and the bus was five minutes late and I, I started getting upset and angry about it. And uh, I had to kind of check myself because, you know, when I was back in South Africa, I would wait it's often like half an hour or an hour for a train or a bus um, that's running late. Um, so to come back to, to my point, uh, the public transport in Luxembourg is amazing. Um, it is very efficient, always runs on time, um, and it's all free. So you, trains, buses, the tram, everything is free as far as public transport is concerned in Luxembourg. And uh, what's quite nice about it is that if you want to visit a neighboring country that by train, for example, you only pay for the portion that is part of the neighboring country. So anywhere traveling within Luxembourg is, is free by the public transport. Um, that being said, there are a lot of people who do have cars um, in Luxembourg, quite fancy cars actually, because uh, there's quite a little bit of money going around over here. Um, it, is, it is advantageous to have a car um, in a sense of if you'd like to, to travel and see the countryside because there's lots of beautiful um, natural uh, spaces within Luxembourg, um, lots of forests that you can go on hikes on. There's quite a bit of farmland around as well and some castles that you can go and see. So 
it's quite nice to have a car in, in that circumstance. But if you want to get your your everyday, you know, things done, it's quite easy to do it by by bus. That's awesome. I mean, free transportation, that's amazing. Like I've lived in Ireland, I've lived in Europe, there's no such thing. I mean, Ireland and America, there's no such thing as free transportation. <laughs> what yeah, it's a, I've been in. So it's that's quite a unique. Awesome. It's quite a unique circumstance here in Luxembourg. Um, and it's, it's something that I always need to remind myself when I go visit other countries is that, okay, you actually need to buy a ticket uh, because in Luxembourg, it's, it's so easy. You just walk to the bus stop and you get onto the next bus. Um, and uh, public transport has been free since uh, the 1st of March, 2020. So it's been almost three years now that, um, that public transport has been free in Luxembourg. And I'm sure like the residents are loving it. So speaking about transportation and visiting other countries, how has it been living in Luxembourg and being able to travel to neighboring countries and to countries that are a bit further, even to the UK? How has it been traveling from there? Well, it's quite nice from Luxembourg though, because Luxembourg is, is quite central, as you know. So it's smack bang in the middle of uh, or between Germany, France, and Belgium. So uh, to go to any one of those countries is quite easy. You drive half an hour in any direction, and you basically in a, in another country. Um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, one of my first cross border trips in Luxembourg was actually we I went on a hike with a friend of mine, and we actually just walked across <laughs> the the Luxembourg Belgium border. So um, I mean for for five minutes I was in Belgium and then I just walked back to Luxembourg. But um, for travel on a broader scale, uh, traveling from Luxembourg is quite nice, especially around um, Western Europe. So like I said, Germany, France, Belgium. Um, it can get a bit pricey though because Luxembourg airport is quite a small airport um, and it's quite a small country. So uh, it can get a bit pricey if you trying to do like longer haul flights. So for example, if I fly to South Africa um, or even if I had to fly to the States, um, it could be a bit pricey. And I'll, I might choose to fly out of a, a main hub like uh, Paris or Amsterdam or something like that. But um, generally speaking, traveling in and around and out, uh, in and out of Luxembourg, it's quite easy, obviously, provided that you have the right paperwork and all that. Um, yeah, it's it's quite nice and uh, there's quite a quite a few things to see over here. So speaking about paperwork, right? I know that when I lived in Ireland, I needed a Schengen visa to travel into Europe because uh, Ireland is a bit separate from main mm -hmm. from main Europe. Um, do you need a Schengen visa? Do you need to apply for a Schengen visa while living in Luxembourg to travel to all these other countries, or does that long term stay visa that you spoke about earlier? Um, give you the right to travel to all those countries without that additional Schengen visa? So when you first come over to, to Luxembourg um, for work purposes, um, you'll have that 90-day Type D visa. Um, but once you have your resident um, kind of status and you have your residency card, that, almost, that kind of like replaces your Schengen visa. So it basically acts as your Schengen visa. So if I want to travel to any country within the EU, I, I can do so freely with my residence card um, and my passport. Uh, at one stage, you could just take your residency card and travel a lot around in the Schengen area. Um, but now I, you know, I think also with COVID and so on, uh, my passport always gets checked. So the only uh, places that I would have to do applications for in terms of paperwork to travel would be the UK. Um, and luckily, through my work, I was able to acquire a, a UK visa. As I mentioned, we, we have a London office, which I travel to quite often. Um, and then, of course, if I had to fly to the States, um, I would most likely need a visa for that. Um, outside of that, I'm not sure uh, in terms of visa requirements, but definitely within the EU, I, I get to travel around freely with my, my residency card. That is so blissful. You can literally go to Venice and... <laughs> Like, which without... I actually have done last year. Oh, that <laughs> must be so nice. Venice is beautiful. And um, I, so again, one of the advantages of having lived in a house is that I, I made a really good um, Italian friend. 
and we we got along quite well and uh he he lives in veneto and um he took me around the, almost the whole of vicenza uh, oh sorry the whole of veneto so we went to vicenza padova venice of course um and i got to stay with his um his father for for two nights um a really old uh, italian gentleman that taught me how to make pasta from scratch oh wow so oh. it was it was great to have that proper you know home home style uh, kind of living like the local experience like an authentic experience like exactly. an italian italian exactly experience. which i was lucky enough to have in paris as well it's also friends i've met through my house here who i was with and uh, they kind of took me a lot around around Paris um, and I could see travel around Paris like a local which was quite quite great so uh yeah I've, I've had some some really nice travels so far so basically you're saying how share initially so that you can meet all these people and you'll stay with them in different countries across <laughs> Europe and I like mean, it's, a, like it's, a, it's a brilliant way to make friends <laughs> um you, you've got a good point and uh I've met so many people from so many different nationalities and and being exposed to to culture um I've met I mean even the people that I work with and that's a a big advantage of working in a place like Luxembourg because um there's so many foreign nationals that work here uh within a single team you can have every single person being from a different nationality so when I started working at um, my previous company or well, the first company that I worked for in Luxembourg we were a team of five and all of us were from from different countries and it's actually the same now when i come to think about it i share office with four people and we we all from from different countries so it's quite cool because you you get exposed to to culture and and new languages and new food and it, it's really great so you say that Luxembourg is very diverse in terms of culture. So many different nationalities that are living there. Tell us about the South African community within Luxembourg. Is there a big community? Like, do you see a South African every time you turn your head? Does your ear hear the accent every time you go out? What is it like? Well, I mean, your your everyday life, um, of course, is quite busy. So um, you you don't necessarily hear hear it all the time. But uh, I I do have quite a large group of uh, South Africans that I hang out with. Um, as I mentioned before, you one of your previous interviewees, um, Margot. We actually play hockey together over here in Luxembourg. And um, within my hockey team alone, we are seven South Africans. So it just all happened, you know, the one recruits the other and so on. So uh, I'd say that the the South African community in Luxembourg is is quite um, I won't say closely knit, but people do know of one another. So um, there will always be some kind of connection within Luxembourg before you even come to Luxembourg, uh, which was uh, my case as well. I had a, a former colleague who had moved here with her husband a year before, and I could reach out to her for all of these details, um, similar to what we are talking about now, and she could share knowledge with me. So there's quite a big South African community within Luxembourg. Um, we don't uh, necessarily all have like a major South African like massive gathering, uh, which would be cool, like, especially for Heritage Day. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's also uh, an event in Luxembourg that takes place every year called um, the International Bazaar. And um, it's a event for uh, charity. And uh, you have representatives from all of the countries that are present in Luxembourg having different stalls and they sell food, craft, um, alcohol, of course. Um, and uh, this year, in actual fact, uh, South Africa was one of the first stalls like uh, at the entrance. So yeah, it was quite cool to have some Budovos and some Savannah and uh, some Mrs. Bull's chutney and oh. Mando sauce and <laughs> Fritos. Um, oh, goodness. Yeah, that, that was really cool. So, uh, yeah, we definitely, to come back to your, your question, we, we have a really good uh, South African community and I myself have quite a, a tight group of South Africans that uh, I hang out with. In, in fact, just yesterday I had a little dinner party at my place um, and I had some South African friends over. So 
we, we are well represented here in Luxembourg. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And, you know, you said you had a dinner party and been speaking about food. I know that you love cooking and that you really enjoy the art that goes around cooking. So tell me, do you prepare some South African dishes for yourself? Is there anything that you miss from home um, that you really crave for on certain days that you can't find in Luxembourg? I mean, this is such a such a heavy question for me because I am so because I am so uh, such a big foodie. Um, so, from a general perspective, the 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 quality of um, like natural ingredients and uh, fresh produce over here in Luxembourg is not that great. So, uh, for example, the first time I had a carrot over here, it, uh, it tasted like nothing, and. I put the carrots in the fridge and about two days later it was kind of like mushy and it went and it went soft. Um, but uh, of course everything gets imported and they get, you know, it's in cold storage and it comes in here when it's um, not yet ripe and then it, ripes on the sh it ripens on the shelf. Um, so the fresh produce in South Africa is really what I miss because you, you know, if you in South Africa, if you're going to bite into a carrot, you know, it's going to be crunchy, it's going to be sweet. Um, so in general, that's not that great over here in Luxembourg. Um, the meat is decent over here. Um, and ironically, it's one of the first things that people mention, or Europeans mention, you know, Europeans that have visited South Africa, one of the first things that they mention is that the meat in South Africa is really good. So um, over here, it's not that great. I mean, it's, it's decent. But um, I'd say that the food here is okay but not as good as it is in South Africa. Um, in South Africa, well, the things that I do miss is Nando's. We don't have Nando's over here. We also don't have KFC. There's, yeah. not, a single, there's not a single KFC in Luxembourg. So I really miss like just on a Friday night, streetwise to a cold floor. And the uh, and gravy. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> what it is, uh, the bun is the mini loaf. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So um, that's something that I miss from a fast food perspective. Um, but I must say also, like my palate has changed a bit. I, I realized that in South Africa, we we throw everything on everything. So we, we overindulge, actually. Yeah, exactly. And we, we spice everything to, like, to death. Um, and it's something, again, that I learned from, from my Italian friends of how to cook simply, but just very delicious. So you spoke, you spoke about the fish produce, you spoke about the meat. Tell us, how much does a typical grocery run cost in Luxembourg? If you go to the grocery store and you're getting your groceries for, let's say, a week or two, how much would you roughly spend on it? So for a week, you can spend anywhere be for a week for a single person. Uh, so one person, you can spend anywhere between 20 and 30 euros. Um, we, I must mention though that a lot of comp or most companies in Luxembourg, um, as part of your benefits package, you get lunch vouchers, and um, those vouchers you can use to either eat out, which I wouldn't recommend because eating out is quite expensive over here, um, but you can use it for groceries as well. And you normally you normally get a minimum of ten, and oh, sorry eighteen, and they are ten euros eighty each. So it comes to about one hundred and ninety. 195 euros, let's say. So let's round it up to 200 euros. Um, if you are a single person for a month, you can spend, you can get away with spending 200 euros if you shop carefully. I normally go up to about 200, 200 and say 250 euros, depending on whether I'm entertaining or you know anything like that, or I want to try something new in the kitchen, or if I feel like I'm splurging a bit. But you can get away. Um, with about 200 to 250 euros on groceries uh, in Luxembourg for a month. That's not bad. That's actually really good because I remember my first time I went to like a Walmart here just on like buying like disinfectants and stuff like that. It was like $70. And I was like, what? Wow. I didn't even buy food. <laughs> and that, yeah. It's crazy. Like sh shopping and grocery shopping, you're spending $100 or more so on a trip, it's a lot of money. So spending 200 to 250, and that's like splurging maybe on the higher end, like you said, that's actually quite decent. A lot of people actually also travel across the border <laughs> to, to Germany to, to buy shopping, uh, to do some shopping over there. Um, 
but from what I've gathered, most people buy some kind of non perishable things. So toiletries, um, like you said, disinfectants, uh, you know, stuff to clean the kitchens, bathrooms, that type of stuff. And um, I've been told that it can be almost half the price that it is in Luxembourg. Because um, things in general in Luxembourg have got quite a high markup. Um, ironically, this Luxembourg has the cheapest fuel, almost the cheapest fuel prices in the whole of Europe. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the neighboring countries actually come full up in Luxembourg and then go back to, to France or Germany or whatever. So those, they those full alone. up in Luxembourg and you guys go to them to buy groceries. Buy groceries. Like that's the exchange. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It seems well, so. that, you've listed quite a few perks about being in Luxembourg. You know, you see the transport, the vouchers that you guys have, the um, low cost of, of actually being there with regards to the um, medical examination and the residence card. Tell us what is your like top perk or perks of being in Luxembourg as opposed to, let's say, being in South Africa? Peace of mind. Um, <laughs> It's, I'm sorry. it's that simple. <laughs> I mean, I understand. I don't think that you need to elaborate further on that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, and I, I completely understand, you know, peace of mind is um, something that we all need in a sense of security and feeling mm -hmm. safe as well. Um, is, yeah. But I mean, I'll, I'll, I will elaborate on it. Yeah, it's, sure. it's, not, it's not just a matter of feeling safe. It's also a matter of um, you know, feeling well taken care of in a sense of you, you earn enough money to take care of yourself. The government has enough money to take care of everything else from an administrative perspective. Um, and everything that you, that you need and everything that you want, you can actually get very easily. So um, the other thing is also that just Luxembourg as a, as a country as a whole, um, it's very... It's very easy to love you, let me put it that way, because everything is clean. Um, the language is a bit of a barrier sometimes, but you, you can always find a way. So there's, if you need something uh, while you're walking on the street, you can access the free Wi-Fi network, Google it. If you can't understand someone, again, you just grab out your phone, you Google Translate. Um, the public administration here is, for coming from South Africa, it's so fast. I mean, they, they still use like normal mail over here, but it works so efficiently that you kind of like, okay, well, if it works, why not? Um, so the other thing is also that everything over here is super clean. And that's something that I really love about Luxembourg. I mean, I was walking in the city on, one, on my lunch break during the week and uh, I saw a guy with a big machine and it had like this long pipe that he was dragging along on the floor. And I was kind of like curious and I walked past and um, I saw that he like put this pipe on the ground and he and it sucked up a cigarette butt. So they were literally like vacuuming the floor. Like the top. <laughs> exactly. So um, yeah, for, in, in that sense, it's a very pleasant place to live. Um, I haven't ever felt like I was uh, in danger at any point. Um, you can walk in the street at night you know, with your AirPods, with your phone, no one's going to bother you um, because there's, there's just so much to go around over here that you, you don't necessarily see the the need or the want for people to take something that's not theirs. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes when, I, when you walk through the park, you'll see that there's jackets or hoodies or gloves, especially during the winter, that's hanging on the fence because it's something that somebody picked up, put it on the fence, and then whatever item it belongs to will pick it up the next day or whatever, if they do remember. Um, I'm also part of the Luxembourg expat group on Facebook. And oftentimes if somebody loses a wallet or a phone or keys, somebody picks it up, they post it on there. And oftentimes, or most of the time, those type of things get resolved. So that, that type of thing makes it really great to live in a place like Luxembourg because you, you don't have to think about, you don't have to think about things that should be a given. So hence, peace of mind. And you don't have to look over your back four times. As you're exactly. Your, yeah. No, I completely. And you understand. and you don't need to be you don't need to be conscious of where you are because it doesn't matter where you are. Where you are is 
going to be the same from whether you're in point A or point B or point C or D or E or whatever, you know. Um, and, and that's also what's nice. It's that you have like this consistency through, throughout um, your your day-to-day -day kind of life. Whereas in a place like South Africa, unfortunately, certain places and at certain times you kind of need to be a bit more wary. And sometimes you wouldn't even allow yourself to to go to a certain place at a certain time because you know, okay, you you kind of have no business being there, which is quite the opposite over here in Luxembourg. Well, it sounds like you're living a really good lifestyle. It sounds like you've increased your standard of living <laughs> by moving over to Luxembourg and that you're enjoying yourself. You're thriving. Thank you so much for the information that you've shared. I am sure that what you've shared with us today is going to help someone else and not just someone, but many people in making that decision and also saving up the right amount of money before they actually move over to um, mm. Luxembourg and understand the process of actually relocating. Um, Xavier, before you know, we say goodbye, can you please just give a word of advice or some wisdom to somebody who's considering traveling or relocating to Luxembourg? Um, <clears throat> so as you mentioned before, do your research, especially when it comes to housing and the cost of living over here in Luxembourg. Uh, and then after that, go for it. Um, I think, there's a lot of people who, who want to do something like this, whether it's in Luxembourg or anywhere else in the world. Um, just do it. Go for it and do it. Um, you can always, it's good to know things in advance, uh, like the stuff that we mentioned with housing and cost of living and so on. But I'd also say that don't go, don't dive too deep in the sense where you kind of freak yourself out about doing something uh, because then if you'll find further resistance to doing it just if you have it and you are able to do it commit to it you can always go back uh if i think it's better to regret doing something than to regret not doing something yeah. because then at least you you took action on something and uh it's very seldom that i've come across people who have done something like this and have regretted uh at least the experience of it so I would say to, to all of the viewers out there who have something like this in mind, go for it, speak to as many people as you can. Uh, you know, this is a, an amazing platform uh, for you to gain knowledge. And other than that, just go for it. Thank you so, so much, Xavier. You know, one more thing that I picked up from what you had said that I also resonate a lot with is that you contacted somebody that you knew was living in Luxembourg or about the experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is something that's very important that I want to tell the viewers about. If you want to go to a place and you know somebody who's living there, who's working there, connect with that person. doesn't matter if you haven't spoken in five years or in 10 years even. As long as that person is an acquaintance or connection that you have, connect with them and ask them the questions. You never know, that person can help you actually land a job in that area, in that country. So Xavier, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. It's been amazing you having, it's been amazing having you on chats with Shani. I wish you all the best for your future. I told, Like I told you, I think that you have a bright future ahead of you. And also you're a perfect example that you don't need a designation behind your name. You don't need those four special letters, those four special letters <laughs> um, to make it out in the world and to move abroad and to experience amazing things and to actually rise up the corporate ladder. So I'm very proud of you and I'm very happy for your successes as well. Um, thank you everyone else for watching Chats with Shani. Um, like I said before, please like this video and subscribe if you have not already. And please give a Xavier comment below as well. So thanks everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.